all and welcome back to my channel. I am Paige and this week I decided to dive into my vast amounts of yarn. Sometimes I crochet, I just kind of dabble in it. So I have a lot of yarn and I have it in a lot of colors and I thought it would be fun for the very first time we are going to try to make an item of clothing. Shooting for a sweater, we'll see, but if you're interested in seeing how it turns out, please continue watching. As I stated before, I have never crocheted any item of clothing other than a hat and some scarves and like a headband, but I've never really made like a shirt, a skirt, some kind of top. So first off, I needed a pattern and I found this one on Pinterest. It's a very basic pattern and it ends up showing where I can seam up on the sides and for the arms. And I thought because I have so many different colors, I could do a various number of granny squares, join them all together to look like this, and then sew up the sides and the arms just like in the picture. So I have my pattern. Now I need to learn how to make a granny square. <laughs> Along with Pinterest as my resource, we're also diving into TikTok. And I just simply searched granny squares. There are so many different types to choose from. And I actually ended up finding one that seemed pretty easy by a TikTok artist from the hook. And once I learned, I just started crocheting. And crocheting. And crocheting. And more crochet. Wow so many granny squares. I really can't quite explain my rhyme or reason of how I estimated how many granny squares I would need of each color. I tried to measure it out and I tried to place them around and eventually I ended up just making X amount of all the colors. I ran through my green and my orange, but I ended up with something that looks like this. If you notice, there are no sleeves. That's because, like I said, I ran out of green and orange. So this is the design that I had. We are jumping from sweater with an open front, kind of a cardigan, to a vest. <laughs> the general design is gonna be the same. We are making the front of it and then we are going to seam up the sides so you have armholes. <laughs> After the bajillion, I'm pretty sure it was more than 50 if I remember how many were in that picture, I had so many granny squares it was then time to stitch them all together. For joining all of these granny squares together I am going to be using a crochet needle rather than the crochet hook and I'm gonna be using a mattress stitch, another stitch that I learned from that TikTok account. <laughs> now for the mattress stitch, you're going to be sewing in from the front of this hoop right here, and then in the back of the one right next to it, you can kind of see the X right there. Pull the string through. And same thing on the other side, you're going in the back two loops, in from the front and then to the back of the following and pull on through and see if you tighten your string watch all these little stitches come together and it makes a nice neat joint between your granny squares now i am using this mattress stitch to sew up horizontally all of the squares together and then I go through the entire thing vertically. And now that I have a general shape of something that resembles a vest, I am going to be double crocheting around the bottom of the vest up along the middle where it opens in the front and then around the armholes. Once I have the entire thing done, I'm gonna make sure to sew in 
all of those tails, so many tails, you guys, and get a nice, neat looking vest. By now, if you haven't learned, this video really isn't a tutorial, but I learned so much from making this, what was supposed to be a sweater, ended up turning out kind of cardigan vest-ish. Number one being the size of your granny square matters. If I had made my granny squares just a little bit bigger, I could have done like a tank top or a vest that had skinnier straps and didn't overflow so much over my shoulders. Granted, it was supposed to be connected to sleeves, but the size of the granny squares can make your job way easier. Which leads me to my second point, which is just the sheer amount of tails and ends of yarn that I had to sew into these granny squares. If I had made the granny squares bigger, there would have been a lot less of those tails to worry about. I did give this a pretty decent shot. I measured out my body proportions and tried to stick to them. It was really just the lack of yarn. <laughs> and if I had thought really about how much yarn takes to make a sweater, I would have probably had more on hand, chosen a different color scheme. But here is the finished vest. Oh, this is the inside. I guess it's, you could wear it either way. I kind of, uh, you can reverse it, I guess, since all of the strings are sewn in. But here's the back. It's not uh, the warmest thing, but my husband loves it. I don't know why he thinks it's cozy. He thinks it looks cool and antique -y. But even though this project didn't turn exactly how I imagined it, I learned so much by making my first sweater kind of item of clothing, and I am really excited to start getting into another one. Here are some clips of this piece out in the natural light. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's craft. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And if you did, feel free to hit that like button or subscribe to the channel. I usually try to post videos on Fridays. I also try to list all of the materials I used in this week's craft down in the description box below. I'll see you guys all for the next one.